pendidik dan I don't have any topics that were not previously anticipated 48 hours before the in advance of the meeting. So uh, I'll um, call for the approval of the minutes. So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Well, we can't do that because we've got we've got several minutes here that need to be approved. My understanding, Mr. Chair. What's that? Say so which which meetings are you saying to approve every single one of them in mass or? Just, you can do them one at a time if you do. Okay. okay. So is there a second? Second it. Okay, there's a, any discussion? What's the first one, Risa? The first one is, yeah, yes, sir. So I'll move that we approve the minutes for February 28th. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, hold on, I forgot, I circled something. Um. Do I have permission to ask Miss Creek about this? This one, I don't understand what this means right here because it's. You can go ahead. Um, Miss Creek, on um, <laughs> uh, the minutes of February twenty eighth, on the second page, oh, about three quarters of the way down. It said, Mr. Allen raised his voice and stated that he will space period E, his name on the report. Do you have any idea what that means? It was bleeped. It was bleeped. <laughs> Let me see if I can go back. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, Would you please tell them that our meeting has already commenced so that they can. So they can what? For the video. For the video. They just arrived. Yes, I know, and they're still talking. Okay, just... okay folks. We're... Hey, folks. Yeah. So, we... Yeah. Okay. So the meeting is going on. So. Okay. I, I'm not concerned about that. No, no, no. Pam's going to look at the tape. Um, the the second thing was just to, uh, the misspelling of Gary DePace's name on the last paragraph. It says Gary DeFace, and we want Gary DePace. <laughs> but that's really all I saw. I have no objection. I have no objection. Um, so uh, with those corrections, so the motion passes. The next uh, set of minutes is? Is Wednesday, March 29th. Any changes recently? I, can I have to. these, you know. <laughs> I have no, uh, I have no, okay. you know, I appreciate, I appreciate you reading them carefully. Um, and the next one, oh, so we're going to vote on those. Yes. Is there a motion to? I'll move that we approve the, the minutes of March 29th. I so, second that. Any further discussion? I'll call for a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I hear none. And the next one is Wednesday, April the 5th. Do you have any corrections? I have no corrections. I move that we approve the minutes of Wednesday, April 5th. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The motion passes unanimously. Next. Executive Director Report. Are you out of minutes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. We have we have to say something about Harry coming in now. Why? Uh, uh, for the minutes, so that the because the commissioner comes in late, it has to be noted when a commissioner comes in and when a commissioner leaves. Doesn't matter. That's yeah. really, it does matter. It, does, it doesn't. It's recorded. It. You have to verbally say. But then go ahead and say it. I'm not the chair. You are. I'm delegating it to you. Um, we're going to, we need to take a minute. Uh, Mr. Moskin 
has left the room and Mr. Chadwick has not yet entered the room. So we need to take a moment until our two commissioners return. And they have. So uh, Mr. Chadwick has entered the room and so has Mr. Moskin. Okay, duly noted. The uh, next order of business is the executive director's report, starting with financials. Do you want to just take it? So we have the, um, thank you, we have the warrant report for the month of April. Gary, did you find anything? Uh, so it's only for the April 6th. And it's not working shit. Um, April 20th had not been purchased yet. Uh, no, there is nothing out of the UN. Okay, do we need to approve those or should we just move on to the treasurer's report? If you could approve them, that would be good. Thank you. All right. Is there a motion to approve? I move that we approve the warrant reports with invoices on April the 6th. Is there a second? No, second. Further discussion? Hearing none, I'll talk for a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion, it's seen as I abstain. Okay. Thank you. Um, and the treasurer's report, please. So we have the treasurer's report here, and we have actually Gary DePace is joining us today, too. So if you have any questions about that, it might be a good opportunity since you can hear it from the proverbial horse's mouth. <laughs> uh, Gary, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, no, I would like to say now that I'm here, though, I do want to indicate that um, these, this report is something I prepare every month. Uh, they are reconciled cash balances of the Hadley Housing Authority, and um, you can take it to my professional uh, word, these are accurate. Okay. How do you treat a uh, rent payment that's uh, not in on time? <clears throat> that becomes part of accounts receivable. I've given you balances of accounts receivable all the time. Okay. And those are the accounts receivable are current. Those are exactly as of March 31st, 2023. Yes. Thank, thank you. All right. Uh, is there any further discussion on the on Gary's report? Hearing none, uh, is there a motion to approve it? I move that we approve the treasurer's report of March 31st, 2023. Do I hear a second? No, second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Aye, that's unanimous. I abstain. Oh, one abstention. Thank you. And the quarterly reports, please. Gary, would you mind reviewing those as well? Sure. The quarterly report that we have in front of you will represent the six months uh, into our fiscal year. Um, I will indicate that I'm seeing that we are overspending our budget um, at this point by about 13,000 of our ANUEL, the annual non-utility expense level. Uh, the primary spots those are going to have been in maintenance. Uh, we've had some um, turnovers of units in our 705, which has cost a substantial amount. Um, so we probably will be looking to move some monies around or increasing the expenditures out of operating reserve to cover these costs before our fiscal year ends. Um, that just is the way it happens. I mean, we've had extraordinary, I think you've probably been told about the vacancies and what we've had to do. Uh, so the quarterly report does reflect that. Um, but our reserve levels are, are sufficient. I do want to indicate, in fact, today I came in early because I wanted to go back in history, back to 2006, to actually show our operating reserve balances here at the Housing Authority and up to where we are now. We reached a low point in 2010. We were down to 10,502 in our operating reserves. Um, we went to 12,909. I will tell you, gradually they went up, and I have the numbers by year of where we went. Um, in 2019, we were at 89,401. I think that's when we major, made a change where we went into management agreement. Um, each year at that point, we went to 
131856 in 20, in 21 to 158, 727, and 930, 22, or 167, 546. Um, so additional maintenance cost or extraordinary maintenance can be budgeted to um, be applied to our reserves. And we're well within the constraints of what DACD allows, meaning we don't want to be below 35%, you don't want to be above a hundred percent. And what is that percent? Hmm? What is that percent? We are right now probably about 80%, 75, 80. Mm -hmm. So would that indicate that we're not, if, if it keeps rising, would that indicate that we are out of? We've balance? been fiscally um, responsible and uh, not spending money where we shouldn't but we're spending money where we need to. Um, so the projects that we have, I mean, going, I mean, one of the things I think from our, our capital money is the window project, which I think is the big one at this point. Um, but the reserves are there to cover um, extraordinary items, which, you know, apartment turnover, where it costs more, that's what it's there for. Okay, you said we were 13,000 over on a budget of what? Oh, of the annual. If you look at the monthly, well, what was the annual? The annual is the annual non-utility expense level. That's the way DHCD controls um, our, let's say, our pie, the amount of money we get. Uh, it's a, the a, current annual is two hundred fifty-seven thousand two hundred ninety-seven dollars. Okay, our prorated annual because we're six months in should be half of that one twenty-eight six forty-nine. And our currently we've spent 141,955. And that's the monthly report we receive here. It's a summarized on the bottom. Are we showing that? Thank you. Yep. Any further discussion? Oh, Mr. Chair, can I just um, please, please? Gary, at what point would we be doing a budget revision closer to we, we budget revisions are required to be in two months before the end of the fiscal year? Um, they can be done at any time, but uh, the last one that we would want to do would be um, due on August. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No, you have to address the chair. And this is this is this is commission discussion. Okay, I wanted to please hold it until. Um, Okay, uh, uh, any further discussion on the uh, quarterly report? I have a question now, just a general uh, thing run. Uh, Bruce, if you have a project coming up, when do when do, when does like Gary learn what kind of money you're going to need over the next month or three months to get the work orders done that are on the schedule? When does he get a budget for the work orders that are pending? So I think you're looking at two different things. There's projects and then there's maintenance. So the projects like the window project is pretty much handled through the CAP hub, which is a DHCD, Department of Housing. Um, and then it depends on the project, whether it's handled by in-house by the Housing Authority or by Department of Housing, or we have an RCAT, which is a regional capital assistance team. Okay. In the case of the windows, it's handled by Department of Housing because of the size of the project is over $100,000. Right. If it was... Between 10,000 and 50,000 is usually our cat, and then the smaller projects are done in-house. So uh, if you're asking questions about the vacancy and money that was spent um, recently in the vacancy here, um, that was, um, as I came on board, the, the window project used all our, our capital funding. We did not yet approve the ARPA funding, which was an additional funding we got over $80,000 to do additional projects. That had not been approved, so we had to get the work done. We hired a combination of contractors and our maintenance team to get that 705 unit turned over, but it still ended up being over $40,000 to get the new cabinets, new flooring, downstairs and upstairs, um, and then we put a new bathroom in our cell. So that, that, the VCD project, just to kind of cover everything, uh, where we are with the windows, I'll just talk about that real quick, is that um, Department of Housing has the, uh, the contract, DHCD, and they have to approve the contract before we can proceed with the, the project 
pre-construction meeting and so forth. So we're waiting on DHCD that has the approved contract. We have the low bid approved. Um, you guys have voted on that already last month, um, but the contract is still sitting with DHCD. And there's uh, any holdups? Do they call you and say, we don't trust this contractor or we don't like that material or are we? Um, the person that approves it was on vacation and they're back now. Okay. <laughs> that was the hold up. <laughs> but all these general work orders, replacing where fridges were, or opening up a hole in the wall to see we'll, if they don't. We'll come to that in a minute. That doesn't ever surprise Gary. That's all just. Um... Well, we, we communicate. I mean, this is what the, the whole thing is. Each yeah. Month as we go, we watch these reports. And when I see something, you know, that looks like it's we're overspending, we talk. Good. And that's when we, I mean, I don't know whether that unit was that bad until it kind of comes around. This is what the whole team is all about. Um, and then we start looking at, well, what's our options? Well, options usually are not, uh, we're not going to do it. Although I want to tell you, when we were back in 2008 and 2007, uh, reserve levels, when that used to happen, we'd have to sit back and say, we don't have the money. Right. Um, so it's it's all communication. It's the team. It's the way we pull everything together to determine what's acceptable. And when we get submit budgets to DHCD, even though, and I've always said it, even though the board approves the budget, it still has to get approved by DHCD. They're the ones that oversee the actual expenditures uh, and the way everything operates. Um, so it's not just, we can't just go by it. And we have to do it in accordance with the budget guidelines, which obviously that's the document that comes out every year. This is how thick it is. That tells you exactly how to do a budget and get it approved in accordance with their guidelines. And that's what they are, is guidelines. Okay. Okay. Thank you. When I have an expense to answer your question too, I will check with Carrie. Do we have funds? This is what I need. So I'll get a quotation, a proposal. All right. This is what I need. Do we have funds for that? So we communicate often. Um, do we have the funds right now to pay for this? Good. That's what, that's what I wanted to hear. Thank you. May I ask a question? Mr. Chair. Please. Okay. Um, a couple of meetings ago, uh, the a quorum of the board voted for an independent audit of Hadley Housing Authority finances. Not it wouldn't have my understanding was it wouldn't have been uh, through DHCD's processes or rules or regs. It would have been hiring an independent auditor to review our financial books going back four years. Is that anything that's necessary? Does it, is that a DHCD? I mean, do they approve it? Where would the money come from? Well, it would, it would come from your budget, but the guidelines for audits for this side of the housing authority requires, an, and again, in the budget guidelines, you've had an AUP. An AUP is an annual uh, or agreed upon procedure that DHCD set forth in which they approved certain independent certified public accountants to perform the AUPs on an annual basis. I believe we've complied. We've had independent audits. I don't believe there's been exceptions uh, found. Those procedures are all listed in a public housing notice. Yep. You just used the word exception for the room, not all of us having a finance background. Okay. Could you explain what it would mean to find an exception? Okay. A typical exception would be operating reserves. Let's say the expenditures get to a point where your reserves are below 35%. That would be an exception. Um, because it would not the, trigger another. That would trigger something to DHCD to start questioning what's going on. Um, or expenditures outside of, of um, something that's been approved. That would be an exception. Again, you'd have to look at each 
um, a procedure, again, an agreed upon procedure has specific tasks that an auditor is reviewing. One of them is a sample of tenant files in which the to make sure that the calculation of what that tenant is paying in rent is accurate. Um, and again, it's a sampling. It tells you, you know, they're not looking at every file. An audit auditor will come in and choose probably three or four files and review those to make sure the documentation is there and the rent calculation has been correct. They then tie that all the way to the general to the uh, tenant ledger to make sure that that's been appropriately done. They also examine deposits to make sure that the deposits that are made of the tenants are applied appropriately and goes to the bank. So they're, they're, they're doing a number of procedures. Okay, but so, the, the discussion that we had at the time mm -hmm. had not to do with the AUP. <clears throat> it had to do with the financial audit, and it had to do with the context in which we operate as a part of the Amherst Housing Board. And the financial audit was discussed to make sure that we were getting our fair share of the total revenue that went to the Amherst Housing Authority. What's your feeling on that? My feeling is, I believe we're following the guidelines of everything that's uh, required the guide, between... Excuse me, the, the <clears throat> guidelines, and I've talked to uh, Ben, what's his name? The guidelines don't, <clears throat> they haven't been changed to take into account a situation where we have here, where Amherst Housing Authority is doing three housing authorities under one roof. Yes, they have. There's public housing notices about management agreements. Um, yeah, they are specific. The management, excuse me, okay. the management agreement is, have you read it? I've seen the guidelines that come out from have the Have you read the management, the management agreement? I, okay. I I can only tell you that. Okay, so uh, my next my my further question was another thing that triggered it seemed the discussion among the commissioners about conducting an audit was uh, we had a situation where a vendor was undergoing a software change and a clerical error was made, which has since been corrected, where they. Uh, build us a different rate for their services than the agreed upon rate. Uh, and it was corrected, but there was some concern that uh, if a vendor bills an inappropriate uh, hourly rate and it's not caught by the department head or anyone else, is does that justify spending the money to hire outside of DHCD's um, uh, policies and procedures and regulations? Does that justify spending thousands of dollars on audits to catch that kind of yeah. clerical error that was then immediately corrected? My opinion is no, because there is audits are performed on a cost benefit. You have to look at that. We also look at with audits, and even with the AUP, is the internal controls. Um, you know, you have more internal controls now than you did when you used to just have one person sitting in that office, right, uh, doing everything. Um, because now bills have to get approved; they have to go to Carrie, who reviews. And errors do occur. There's, no, there's perfection. We live in an imperfect world. Um, but it's those internal controls that we hope we have that's going to limit that. And there is no audit that could be performed that anyone could ever say, oh, we've audited and it's 100% accurate. You can't. There is no assurance that does that. There's, there's always the risk involvement in any type of audit report that's being issued. Um, so do I personally think that spending money on an audit which is not required to basically look at numbers that I professionally can tell you are accurate, as accurate as I can. I mean, again, we have those little things that happen, and all we do is hopefully find those and we correct them. Speak to the internal controls that you just referenced. 
yep. that allow a person who used to be a commissioner to uh, have her signature fixed to checks for payment of invoices for months after she left the commission. Go ahead. Okay. Speak I, I don't, I can't answer to that. Um, I understand it was an error that happened. An error? I, I t That's an internal control issue, is it, is it not? There might have been. I mean, <laughs> can we speak to that? I mean, I know this has been kicked around and it shouldn't have happened, but... Okay. okay. You didn't catch it. No, it was with... It was... The checks were cut after all the approvals went through. And then... The, I don't believe the physical checks were looked at, and the checks had automatic or generated signatures on them, <clears throat> electronically generated. So after all the approvals went through, those checks went out without looking at the actual check. I'm I'm wondering, uh, Chair Allen, if um, the the reason they even went to electronic signatures was because of COVID. It wasn't even allowed, my understanding is, before COVID. Everything had to be physically signed. And this was this huge change because of COVID. DHCD had to change their policies to allow for these electronic signatures. So this was the first time in any housing authority in the state had to, to move from, from pen and ink to to electronic and then to to realize okay we've got an approved electronic signature that nobody ever sees on a check except the vendor we're paying i think that's what is that reasonable so um larger housing authorities have been doing electronic okay. payments as has, as has been municipalities and other businesses mm -hmm. so it is new for hadley to be doing it amherst okay. had done it as well too but again, the internal process went through, as what we had said at the last meeting, too, with department heads approving individual um, receipts coming through to Carrie, coming through to myself, and then the board um, doing the, the warranty. So there was all those approvals. And then when the cut, the check is cut, it has the electronic signature and it's stuffed in an envelope. Right. And I don't know if the staff was just going quickly, mm -hmm. um, but it was absolutely a mistake that's been corrected. Um, and then after all the, the warrant, when Gary is posting to the general ledger, he's making sure that those dollar amounts are equal. Yeah. That there's no extra no, money. No, look at his signatures on checks. Exactly. I'm looking exactly. at what the payment and who it went to. Right. Exactly. I, I'm talking about internal control, not signatures on checks. Okay. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that the internal controls from any business I've ever been associated with would have caught somebody whose uh, facsimile signature was used to pay, to to, uh, to uh, issue a check, would have caught that right away. And I'm wondering, I, I don't understand why you're not agreeing with me. I, because this was COVID? I mean, there's so many no, things. No, 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 no. No, it has nothing to do with COVID. It has nothing to do with COVID. This occurred This it, This occurred last year. When we were still dealing with COVID. We, I, absolutely. Okay. Our, right. our workload has increased. All right. Moving ahead. Um, the next, uh, do we need to approve the report? The court. Well, you do. All right. The court. Is there a motion to approve the court day report? I'll make the motion approved. Motion's been made. Is there a second? My second. Is all in favor? Aye. Aye. That's I abstain. And okay. It has this um property manager reports. Unit we can see report. Is that um, mm -hmm. is there anything unusual about the unit vacancy report right now? No. No. Just normal. Normal. Okay. Any discussion on that? I have a question. Why the numbers don't add up here? We have uh, three vacancies at uh, Golden Sport, two at Berkeway. That's five in my book. We have four here on the report. 37 and 10 is 47, not 48. Again, attention to details, in my opinion. I don't know. Can you explain the difference of the numbers? I don't know. Yeah. I think it was the transfer. 
That's mm-hmm. because the ca- it was a, there was a transfer. Yes. Right. So yes, a, a resident at Golden Court moved from one unit to the other. So it's it's kind of a net. Moved from. Uh, they moved from. Golden Court. Trans- no, actually, within Golden Court, due to a reasonable accommodation, so they moved from one unit to another. Transfer of the road, the toll goes off. Was that the bottom line? Answer your question. Sure. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. Would you stop talking to me until I'm calling for a motion? Mr. Chair, I have asked you to please ask the public to stop talking so that I can hear your motion. Yeah. Would well, you reasonably accommodate my not, hearing needs? They're not making any noise they, right now. They, they were, but you can't hear right them. Now, I can. Right now, they are not. Right this minute, they are not. But when, if I ask you to reasonably accommodate my hearing needs, would you please do that? I'm, of course. Thank you. All right. There's a motion. Is there a motion? There's no motion on this. You don't need to vote on these. We don't need to vote. Okay. No. All right. Um, the tenant's account receivable report. Who, who addresses that? That's me also. And there's no vote on this. It's just for reference. Are we uh, within the parameters? Yeah, everything is fine. It's just for reference. Thank you. Uh, the uh, facility capital item. Is that Bruce? Well, I have an update from... Uh, Earlier, when I said that contract was not approved as of eleven fifteen, I got an email. <laughs> so the window contract is approved. <laughs> so now it'll be Dep- uh, Department of Housing will contact me to set up the pre-construction meeting, and and then we'll plan the meeting moving forward. So, but as uh, <laughs> when I spoke earlier, it was not approved as of eleven fifteen. I got an email that the window contract has been approved. <laughs> Do you have any guesses to when we can remove it from the um, agenda? We'll never. In other words, when it would be completed. Oh, when the whole entire project is completed. Yeah. I I do not have a I do not have an estimate at this time for that. And, and uh, I assume you would be also the work order report. I, I create the work order reports and have them available. I, uh, it's really just information of all the work that the maintenance team has been doing. If there's any questions about any of it, I'd be happy to answer them. But again, it's just uh, providing some of the work that's been going on. Any questions? Well, it's fair or not, but uh, when, when will the unavailable units become available? We actually have some units that are available right now. And so it's just a matter of them getting filled through the, the process of, you know, application coordination. Oh, good. And, uh, how, how many of We have other units that are um, in work. We're waiting on uh, funding. Um, there's a, one of the 705s is a project now, and it's being funded through the ARPA funds that have now been approved. And so that is an RCAP project, Regional Capital Assistance Team. So I'm not actually managing the project. I'm coordinating with the RCATs to, to, to get that done. It's initial planning stages right now. How, how many units are available right now? Four, right? <laughs> in the in the vacancy report, well, I mean, the, I think we just covered, but there's a there is a 705 that is ready to go, and and I wouldn't be I wouldn't have all the other information because I don't know which ones have been filled that we had ready. Okay. 41 filled. You know, I'm sorry. You want to know about vacancies? Right. We have um, three vacancies at Golden Court and two at Berkway. One is still in construction, and we have one that's ready to be vac- or filled. And we have three at Golden Court, and they're all being worked on. There's not one ready to be. So there's only one vacancy. There's one apartment ready for <clears throat> occupancy. Right. Okay. Thank you. I have a question, if you don't mind. Does the DACD reward housing authorities that either totally eliminate, you know, that have really fast turnover and um, don't keep units vacant for more than, let's say, a month or two? Is there any reward from really running a really efficient availability? 
There is not, but there is a penalty if you have your vacancies for too long without a, a waiver. And the uh, we have to apply for waivers to DHCD, and they have to meet certain criteria, criteria in order for them to approve them. And all of the units at Hadley have the appropriate waivers. Okay, good. So in your experience, we're at a pretty good pace of turning over and, and approving the next 10? No, I still, I, we're still not comfortable with how long it takes, but it's it's a CHAMP issue. Um, but And that is, again, the DHCD runs that program. But every single month, it's and almost on a weekly basis now, they, they're making improvements to that system, and it's starting to work. It, it's starting to be where we can get back to um, previous to CHAMP, housing authorities, we had a list of people ready to go. We, when people applied, we vetted them, and then you would just do some minor checking of financials, and you would run the quarry at the very end, and it just moved so much faster. Now we don't, Now that it's a statewide wait system, we don't have that luxury to, to do that. We could have somebody waiting, but by the time we pull the appropriate list, um, they're they're knocked down because somebody with a better priority came in or a higher priority. Okay, thank you. But it is getting better. Good, it's definitely getting better. Thank you. Okay, the next item is a um, report from the subcommittee on uh, rent collection <laughs> policy. Does anyone want to speak to the committee subcommittee? Go ahead. Well, you, uh, you yeah. Yes. The next item is a report of the subcommittee on rent collection policy. So, uh, Rich and I met about the rent collection policy, and we recommend uh, to the board that they approve uh, the rent collection policy that you all received via email and in your packet. This was actually ready to go, what, a month or more ago, two months ago. Uh, but we had tabled it until this meeting. Okay, is the uh, uh, is the commission ready to approve the uh, policy, Mr. Chairman? Please, I would like the uh, rent collection policy committee to reconsider the payment date beyond the fifth of the month. Social Security sometimes sends checks by the 10th, the 12th, even as late as the 20th of the month. I don't know what anybody's particular situation is uh, with all the tenants and when they receive their particular distribution from the SSA, but I don't think the 5th of the month gives sufficient time for uh, late fees being attached if Social Security checks are not coming in as late as the 20th. I would ask for consideration of the committee to change that date of the 5th of the month uh, to something later in the month to capture the SSA uh, payments that come as late sometimes for some tenants as the 20th. Uh, yes. I can answer that. We did discuss that. We have considered it. However, if you notice on uh, the second page, page two, item six, uh, even before that, item five, if someone does not, uh, say they've had an uh, additional expense, like they had to buy tires for their car or some, something happened, all they have to do is contact the office and work out a payment arrangement uh, to catch back up. The other thing is if, if someone's uh, Social Security payment comes in, say, on the 20th, and I suppose there are some that do, then they got their money on the 20th of the month prior. They should have their money to pay on the 5th because they got paid on the 20th of the month prior. So it becomes a budgeting issue that is then worked out with the staff with a payment agreement. Mr. Mr. Chairman, can, thank you. If I can just correct that too. So the, a late fee doesn't go into effect right. until 30 days after. So if somebody pays within that, if they pay the month of April, within the month of April, anywhere from the 1st to the 30th, there is no late fee. Right. The late fee isn't apl applied until March. Right. Excuse me, until May. So the, a late fee, and that's by 
regulation. It's by mass state law and it's by the um, by our lease. And it, it is covered in the um, rental the rent collection policy too. It goes after thirty days. So the the committee, the subcommittee, did look at all those because we've had these questions on the board of commissioners. So we looked at all this, and it's all addressed. This all complies with what DHCD requires, and uh, so this is our recommendation. Okay, Mr. Chairman, does that answer your question? If they want to keep the fifth of the month, I don't support that. I don't see why a later date in the month could be acceptable. Right. We come in the subcommittee. Well, we have housing. I can't hear you. They don't. They're not getting. Yeah. Okay, you got to be quiet, please. You just have. To. So, so. So it doesn't make any difference to me whether it's the 5th or the 20th. Why does it make a difference to the subcommittee is the question. So what date would you put in? Well, if Social Security checks come in on the 20th, and I don't know what tenants get them on the 20th, <laughs> and I also see that this has to be approved by you, anything mm -hmm. past the 5th of the month. Right. So I'm, Wait, whatever, because what whatever the board wants to do. What ends up happening, why there's a date in there, is because then the, the, it triggers further action if the tenant doesn't pay and we're not aware of why they don't pay. So it has to go into that where you're getting a notice, you're getting an invitation to come in and talk, you're getting a 14-day, which we do not do 14-day notices. We do 30-day notices. Um, and I believe the lease, what, what is, it, is the lease the 7th or the 10th? The 1st. Before the 1st of the month. Oh, that's, yeah. That's By the, and that's the DHCD lease. Okay. Mr. Chadwick said it doesn't really matter. And if the committee has recommended that, I will, is there any further discussion? Then I'd like to call for a vote of the um, rent collection policy. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. I have one question. Mm. Discussion, right? Yeah. Um, is a notice to quit the only next step, if the tenant wasn't able to make the conference, pay up the rent, or sign an acceptable payment agreement, is a notice to quit the reasonable next step. I don't have another suggestion. It just notice to quit. It all sounds like the you're you're starting to evict, and maybe that is fair. I don't yeah. know, but it uh, is exactly the same. It. It is. So they get they get the opportunity to pay it, the conference, yep. and most importantly, the repayment agreement, which is what we try to do is to get people into repayment agreement. Um, each month or each quarter, too, we do um, a TAR report, which is tenant account receivable to DHCD. We're held accountable for bad debt. Um, and it, we could we can lose that from our subsidy if we're not collecting it. When we have somebody in a repayment agreement, and that will break it up over a matter of months, the policy allows for five months, um, and then without approval for the um, with approval by the executive director for longer, which I'll do up to a year if they go on to automatic payments. Um, if it, the amount is so large um, that it can't fit within a year then we will go into court just to get a court approved agreement. But then if, and so if somebody's not working with us to collect the rent, that's, that's due. Everyone has to pay rent. Yeah. Um, then that it is the notice to quit is the final option. So what's been the biggest problem? Like um, a tenant passes away or vacates the unit no, if, or just late payments? If they, if they um, pass away, it's, we write off the debt. The debt is written okay. off. It'll come to the board. The board approves the write-off. If somebody moves, we'll be sending um, late payment notices, and then they'll be turned over to collections. And then very soon, too, we've, we're working with the um, comptroller's office yeah. for, through the Commonwealth, through the Department of Revenue, and they'll be going after folks that owe money um, as well. So there's a chance for the agency to recuperate it that way, recoup it that way. Yeah. Um, but most most times it's it is a budget issue or mismanagement of money. Again, um, it's I have 
several tenants in, so Belchertown is um, very good at repayment agreements because they know. So you get it, how it, how it can work. So you get a tenant that all of a sudden needs tires on their car and that's a huge expense. They just can't, they can't do that. They'll come beforehand and they'll say, oh my gosh, I need tires or, oh my, uh, come after the fact, my car needed engine work. Um, can I put this month's on a repayment agreement? And we put it on a repayment agreement. And then you just add something to each month's payment. Exactly. So it's spread out. They don't get, and when it's on a repayment agreement okay. too, that stops late fees. There's no late fees on a repayment agreement. Okay. So it's a win-win. But if somebody's not cooperating, then, then we do have to go to court. Okay. That sounds reasonable to me. Okay. So the motions have been made. Are still under discussion? Yes. I have a question on um, number 11. On the last page, I guess. Seeing as the last couple of meetings, we've had this discussion with the rent and a particular tenant showed bank statements and how monies were coming in or whatever. So under 11 says, shall be the intent of the housing authority to work with the tenant. Has that been done? And has that been resolved for that particular tenant with the late fees that were being charged when rent was already paid? Just a question. Any questions regarding tenants? I didn't give a name. I'm asking in procedure or policy. Cannot. We didn't hear you. We ever. She's not going to answer. Oh, she's not going to answer. Any further questions? <laughs> Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of the. Rent collection policy. It's the five and saying aye. 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 I vote no. Okay. Please. So the motion Could carried. Could you ask that to John and ask him just to sign it? Did you sign this? Yeah. Just... It? It's the rent collection. Oh, not with pencil, oh. though. <laughs> I need a pen. Thank you. Can you ask a question of Pamela, or is this a bad time? Um, does it pertain to? Is it not something that we covered? Um, it's it's on this subject actually. We just passed the. Uh, okay, I'll handle it out outside the meeting. Yeah. All right. Um, the next item is commissioner's discussion. Uh, executive director. You want to just pick that one up? Yes. I I would like to also. Um, ask that under commissioner's discussion, we uh, briefly talk about, uh, uh, I would like to say something about the Mass Narrow Conference we attended. And um, I would like to, I have a question about Robert's Rules of Order regarding abstentions. Okay. Uh, the narrow meeting, we can put that on the agenda for next meeting. And, well, I think we can handle it in 15 I, I, seconds. I'm saying we're not okay. going to handle that today. It's on the agenda for next meeting. And the next item, what's what? I have a quick, we've had several abstentions. I have a question about a uh, procedural question, a parliamentarian question about the acceptable reasons for abstention under Robert's Rules of Order. And what's your question? Uh, my question is, does anyone know uh, or would have a contrary opinion. My understanding regarding abstentions are they are allowed under two circumstances. One is if a commissioner has a conflict of interest. And the second one is if a commissioner was not present for the meeting where an agenda item is going to be voted on. All right. Uh, what I'd like to do is put that on the agenda for next meeting. Everybody can have a chance to review Robert's rules. All right. Um, is there any further discussion on the executive director? There wasn't any. Hearing none, we'll pass. We'll pass over. Any objection? All right. The last item is public comments. Please don't speak until recognized by the chair. Be respectful of others, and comments will be taken under advisement. Yes, Sue. So. Um, 
questions I want to think is, we never ever talk about the amount of money that's spent on evictions or even taking from court. 20 years I've lived here and never ever hear about that. We're in, where does that money come from each time somebody goes to court? You, you, need, to, you need to address the chair. Regardless, well, okay, I'm just looking at that. Regardless if it's a notice to quit or an actual eviction. So, who pays for that and who monitors the amount of, of people being taken to court? I feel that this is a really high number among the three housing authorities. I talk to people in other housing authorities that's nowhere near the same amount as what we have that, you know, since we've been taking it. Are you saying the number of just so people you've been taken to court because of late payments or people actually being evicted, maybe not actually end up homeless, but being taken to court? By the one, where, where does this money come from to take people to court? Okay. Okay, you've, had, you've mentioned several items. One of them was that you're questioning whether the, the um, evictions or notices to quit are higher here than they are in other. Well, well, let's do one at a time. If they're not higher, or they are higher, we need to establish that. I talked about the housing authority. We have a very fine number of people either getting notices to quit or actually being taken to court for evictions. What I'm saying, who, who oversees this? Where does this money come from to even take somebody to court? And, and, that, and this is something I've wanted to... You don't have to answer it right now, but hopefully down the road, it's something that we could get answered. Okay. And another thing now that Gary Dupree is here, maybe four months ago when you were on Zoom with us, one of the things we brought up was the laundry money. Your response was, we have a very good policy on the laundry money, and it can only be used for other for specific things. I'm still waiting for what it can be used for. Not okay. Just being presented, what this is how much is the laundry money been for, this is how much the laundry. We still don't have that list of what it can be used for. And uh, I know that we were two, that mine is 2,000 the laundry. Can we ever get these answers? Can we see an actual list of? I, I, I put that on the list for the agenda and give Gary a chance. I, I know, but let's give him a chance to figure it out. And okay, My, oh. this is. Okay, we we take these things under advisement. Just, we, we brought it up for so many meetings. I understand, but I I put it on the agenda for next meeting. Any further? One one more. <laughs> Another thing, maintenance. All the years I've lived here, our maintenance men have done. Well, we have a turnover in apartments, but maintenance men did a lot of you know a lot of it, and then we also went through times where we have, we bend it out a lot. I, I I understand that a lot of our apartments were in bad shape. That you spent a lot of money, you know, renovating. But I actually think now that the maintenance men are doing more renovation now. We used to bend out more. So I don't understand why your costs are so much um, more now. You've got to direct the question to. In other words, where maintenance right, men that that's a policy issue. That's a policy issue that's up to the executive director, I believe. Um, okay. We're, as commissioners, we're not supposed to get involved in the daily operation. And okay, well, how, how do I ask him? Write a letter to the executive director. Okay, and put it on the record. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right. Are there any other comments? Yes. I'm, I'm curious as to who the subcommittee was. She just said, I think it was Reggie and Risa. So, it, what, am I right? Yeah, but you appointed yeah. us. Yeah, got, I'm answering the question. It was Risa and Reggie. That was the subcommittee? Yes. Okay. Um, I have a question for Bruce, if I'm allowed. Well, address, address the chimney. Windows and think of the windows. I need to buy a new air conditioner. I need to know what size air conditioner am I going to need since we're having new windows put in. Okay. Can I can I look? Can I suggest that you just talk to Bruce about that? Um, not during a meeting. He, he's got a tape measure. He can make sure. <laughs> 
Okay, but not during, but not during a commissioner's meeting. And, and, and I have to buy an interview. You can you, you can talk to him on the way out. Okay. Right, Bruce. <laughs> yes. Windows. Is this a whole apartment? Back in front. Um, again, you can ask Bruce after the meeting. Yeah, I know where you got me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other? Don't you think other tenants want to know these things? Um, well, it would be a easy to get all the tenants to know if a little item were put in the tenant newsletter, wouldn't it? Yeah, but how's that going to happen if we don't bring it up with them? You're going to bring it up with Bruce oh. after the meeting. Please. Okay. In other words, we're going to get it done, but not during the commissioner's meeting. It's just not appropriate. Any other com comments? Yes. I do want to thank all the new commissioners. I've been coming to these meetings for quite a while. And uh, I love the idea of change. I love the idea of new ideas. I love the idea that we can um, hear new thoughts and that people are questioning certain uh, authorities or people that are in charge. So I really enjoy coming to a meeting where the new commissioners are asking questions. And uh, I just thank them all. That's how I feel. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Any further business? Hearing none, I will declare that the meeting is adjourned. Oh, we have to have no. a next meeting. No, just a minute. You have under item seven, next meeting date and items for future agenda. Yeah, I've got okay. three items for the future agenda. We have, we have not had an update on the uh, Marie Chosick chair of the Belcher Town Housing Authority that was uh, going to be tabled. The discussion on that letter that was tabled um so either we have an update on this or we put it on for the next meeting's agenda there was no further discussion mm -hmm. it was asked to be tabled at the uh march 29th meetings yeah okay so where are we with that please don't table if you want it on the agenda for yes the i'd like it on the agenda um And then the progress on the Wi-Fi upgrade uh, was explained that the IT contract was out to bid, closed the afternoon of March 29th, and should have someone on board by May 1st. Where are we with the Wi-Fi in this room and an update on it? So we do have somebody that um, will be starting on May 1st. There's a transition the first week with our old IT person. And that's one of the first things they're going to be looking at is, is the Wi-Fi. Oh. It is a local company, too. So it should be they should be very responsive. That's good news. Very good news, yeah. yeah. So setting reading of staff. Isn't that on Wednesday right there? 29th? But, um, so we'd go to the 30th. Tuesday the 30th? How about uh, Tuesday the 30th is being proposed for the next meeting? Last Tuesday in May, right? Yeah. Question on that. No. Um, this is your last official meeting to chair. So on May 30th, you would not be chairing that meeting Correct. or setting the agenda. And we assume that that would be handled by the vice chair, which is Mr. Moskin. Let's assume that. Well, I'm asking for the consensus here because this is your last meeting. Is that, is that okay? Okay, but would they? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, so. Tag your it. <laughs> so the vice well, chairman will handle the next meeting. Oh, we should make, I like that idea to take a vote for a new chair. Tonight, right now? Yeah, right. No, no, wait no, till the, the election. First. Yeah. Oh, after the election. Okay, okay. But, but I will just point out parenthetically that we moved back in, I think, January to uh, have the chairs uh, rotated once a year. And it would be very good if uh, the chairs were rotated 
the meeting after an election. And we've been, since my term is a short one, this will bring us up to where you can do it every year. Your, yes. your alarm thing's going on. I know, it was, it was still stop. 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 There, see? Magic. Okay. Any further business? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>